So is it also you? Yeah. 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 This is a Korean TO where we're looking at. What's that? Uh, my father says that it is literally in his mind. Oh, cool. You've got a house. It's in. Where's this going to show up? Oh, who knows? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's my stage hand. Tonight, I'm going to introduce to you ZimJS a free JavaScript library of interactive media modules. On the HTML side, we organize with the document object model, the DOM. And on the Canvas side, with CreateJS, we organize with the bitmap object model, the BOM. Do you like that? <laughs> Good one. And even propelled our legacy of learning we owe Grant and the CreateJS team a huge round of applause for that one. Totally solid. So I needed a drag and drop script. And I, I looked around for a bit, I tried a couple, and I found one. And it was 800 lines of code. A drag and drop script. Now mind you, 400 lines of the code were comments. <laughs> so, thank you very much for commenting that code. <laughs> you know, it's nice of you. And then it didn't work on mobile. So it didn't work on Safari mobile. And it's kind of, so I enlisted the help of the dean of HTML5, that being Matthew Potter. And uh, he added about 10 or 20 lines. And these lines, each of them, went right off the screen. <laughs> okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, in Zim, we can drag and drop like this. Zim dot drag round brackets circle. Yeah. So I don't know, like back in the days, back in the day, sort of when something went from 400 lines to one line, we were enthused. Are you guys enthused? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That, but Zim has five different types of hit tests. So um, there's the hit test on a point, there's a hit test on a registration point, there's a hit test on the bounds of something. So you see there's an invisible rectangle around that circle. Here's the circle. Hello, I have an invisible rectangle. And as I go down, that rectangle just hit the gray rectangle. Okay, and yet it's not hitting. So like, ugh, that's kind of too bad. And that's like the hit test shape in Flash. It handles bounds. But now watch this one. Here's a hit test. It's not hitting. The bounds aren't hitting. And there, now it's hitting on uh, a shape. It's hitting points on a circle. Okay, and there's also shape. Here's a shape hitting points on a rectangle. So with those five different hit tests, you can pretty well make uh, any game, any sort of like casual game or puzzle or anything like that. And once again, they're all just uh, one line of, of code in there. Now, when I move this one, did you see it kind of go back? Ooh, okay. That is Zim Move, all right? Um, now, Zim Move wraps the CreateJS tween.js class which is very powerful, much like, uh, you know, most tween engines out there. Uh, let's take a look. There's a button, all right? And when I press the button, that's called a waiter. And then the waiter brings up a pane. Well, the waiter doesn't, pressing the button did. And you can drag the pane around or not, depending on your settings. Inside the pane, we've got parallax. So Zim Build provides a parallax engine as well. That's one of the more complicated ones. Uh, there's also a scroller or a slider over here, which is operating the scroller in the back. Do you see the scroller? Yeah. Whee! Okay, so that uh, a scroller just animates something over and over again and repeats. Uh, here's a checkbox with um, a turning the scrolling off or mid. Those are radio buttons. You know, you all know those. Can you see those down there? Little cute radio buttons. Okay, you might have had to do a console.log at some point. Well, console.log is that, that sort of shows you where your scripts are at. That's too long. 
It's too long. Other languages are trace or echo. Is an echo cute? What's echo in? It's a test of programmability. PHP? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, now we've got Zog, and Zog binds the console.log, so it even gives line numbers and stuff like that. You don't have to go console.log every time, you can just go Zog. Um, I don't know if you guys hate making a random number and saying random time, you know, random is a random number between zero and one. So if you want a random number between two numbers, you have to do some calculations. It's not hard, but now we've got rand AB, so we can just random between those two numbers. Uh, we've got a shuffle of the array, and this allows us to easily um, uh, choose from an array, but in a different order each time. You know, and that's a bit like life. Things always happen in a different order. So uh, a few more of those things. Damp and proportion and proportion damp are very important as well, and a lot of fun. They make what we're building in interactive media look more real. And I've applied damp and proportion damp and damp in an exciting way. So if you've done that before, take a look. It's really neat, kind of two parts. You make the class, and then you, you damp it, and that makes it ease and look better. Ladies and gentlemen, close your ears. You guys in the front, close your ears for a second. I'm going to reach the back. Ladies and gentlemen, can you believe it? We have responsive design on the canvas side. I don't know if it worked. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> How's the speaker system here? Not too bad? Yeah, you guys blown away? Okay, anyway. Um, this is uh, for, for mobile apps and things like that. So here's the page's example. And as I swipe, or hopefully swipe, <laughs> there, there it goes, it went. As I swipe, um, it goes from one page to another. So the pages module itself uh, handles multiple pages. Hey, what are your pages? And if you go up or left or right or down, which page do you want to go to? <laughs> okay. And then it handles all the swipes automatically. And you can also um, hook in uh, hotspots, they're called. So this is a hotspot that we're clicking on. So all of your interface, all your navigation is done in one place. Now, um, as I swipe to the side, uh, we can see the layout class. Now the layout class is what I was talking about with the horizontal and the vertical regions. Okay, woohoo, look at that. Okay, so um, by the way, you can hit the B key to not show them, but imagine that's a really long, narrow phone. <laughs> okay, and as I squeeze, do you see what's happening? Uh, I can't, can I not squeeze any more than that? <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's, I guess it's up to how much the browser is going to squeeze. Uh, hopefully I can get a vertical, enough, enough of a squeeze to be vertical. Come on, please tell me. I can't. Oh yeah, there it goes. Just barely made it. Um, so now I've squeezed it enough so that it's vertical. And that's giving me adaptive design. Now I've moved things up and, up and down and below. That's responsive design here on the canvas. And um, it was also the main thing, the main thing about Adobe Flex. So can you imagine hundreds of engineers, if not 10 engineers, um, built Adobe Flex to do this. And here we've got it now, and it's relatively easy. Once again, you just say, here are my regions, and they all have things like um, margins, background colors, uh, max width, min width, but they're all applied on one nice little object for each one. Okay, so you don't have to go hunting off in CSS and all over the place for this stuff. Um, okay, also on the, on the canvas side, we have no uh, IDE, we have no um, way to see what we're drawing like we used to in Flash. So I'm constantly going, I think I want it 200 pixels wide, no, wait, wait, 220 pixels, no, no, 210 pixels wide. I don't know if you've experienced that, right? So um, instead, I, uh, I made a grid. Look at that, there's a grid. And if you want a grid on your object, you just say, new Zim grid, round brackets, object. Okay, and if you hit the P key, then it goes between percentage and pixels, and you can put it on any object. Now, I had a grid, and it was great, and then I started going like this. Um, okay, well, let's see, how wide is that? That's uh, 225 there and 375 there. 375 minus 225 is, that's actually a pretty easy one, isn't it? 
150? No, 250? 200? Uh, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? I didn't like doing that either. I had a grid, but I still had to subtract numbers. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sound like a gunshot. So, I created a guide. And so here are the guides. And the guides, I was going to make two guides and then show you the, the distance between the two guides, but I sort of said, hey, you don't need that. If you want to find out, say, how long the grid is, or the, the word guide is, you put the one guide at the front, and then you move your cursor, and that X over there says it's 203 pixels. Do you get it? So lots of pages are going to have layouts. Lots of pages might have grids and guides. So we have to rescale those. Those all rescale as we scale. So what do you do? You add them to a manager. So if you want to make a new uh, layout, you add it to the layout manager. If you want to make a new guide to the guide manager and the grid manager, then in your scaling event, you um, just say uh, guide manager dot resize, and it resizes all of your stuff for you. Okay, cool. Back in Zim, I, I had this template, and it was 300 lines of code long. So it had a bunch of meta tags, and a lot of it was meta tags to handle things like uh, viewports and Facebook and Google and all that kind of stuff. But underneath that, um, there was a preloader, so the preload.js was in there as a template. There was, um, and then down at the bottom, there was the, uh, the ways to handle different scaling uh, that would always work, and then a special case for when you want to do full screen. So uh, that was a lot of stuff. And then there was this little line saying, put code here. And I always felt guilty giving people this template and had to find, put code here. So I took that out. I took all the stuff above out and all the stuff below out. That's called abstraction. I took that out and I put it in a class and I called the class frame because it went around where we were coding. Makes sense? And I added it to a frame module. So the template now is just a thing saying, hey, what type of scaling do you want? Do you want no scaling? Okay, which is good for embedding in a other HTML, no scaling. Do you want a fit scaling? Those are what those examples were. And then they fit within whatever stage you have. That's the easiest because it keeps your, your uh, aspect ratio, all right? Which means you can start to design and develop with pixels, not percentages. Um, outside is similar to that, where it stretches and goes outside. That's good for an art, art piece like a fireworks, where you really don't care where the, the stage kind of ends. Um, and then once again, it allows you to, to code with uh, pixels. Then there's full. Full is what we saw with the pages example, where we're trying to meet any screen size and give you full screen um, aspect ratio. That's more complicated, but then that's when you start applying the layout classes and stuff in pages. Okay, and that's full. So you can choose um, the type of uh, scaling that you want, and that's it. Uh, then you get an event saying your canvas and stage is ready. So that's a ready event. Uh, you also get a resize event. So whenever the, the, um, the, the screen resizes, you get an event saying, hey, do your resize code. Good. Uh, do your resize code. And you get a, um, uh, an orientation change event. Thank you, a toast. So in the end, Zim has become not just a library of interactive media modules, but a framework. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>